mysterious underwater world holds grave perils for the deep sea diver on Danger Is My Business. When a salvage diver enters King Neptune's domain, he takes a calculated risk. He will either return safely, or he may become trapped below to slowly suffocate. Here to tell us more about this most hazardous of seafaring activities is an ex-diver himself, Colonel John D. Craig. Weighted with 200 pounds of lead and gear, the salvage diver walks on the bottom of the sea in an air bubble. His life depends upon his line tender and his own security depends on his own alertness and uh, ability to operate on the sea floor. This is the story of Al Hansen, salvage diver of Avalon, Catalina Island. Al's job is to secure moorings for yachts, to answer all sorts of emergency calls that may require the services of a deep sea diver. I'm glad for this opportunity to work with Al Hansen because he was a former abalone diver and we both learned our initial diving in the hard school of experience. Al, I understand that you've been looking for a uh, something down here. Well, what is it? Well, it's a, it's a five ton dredger tooth and I need it real bad for a mooring. I have a new lead on it. I think I'm gonna find it today. No one is more aware of the dangers to divers than Al Hansen. He is preparing to make a routine dive in the waters off Santa Catalina Island, about 20 miles off the coast of Southern California. His wife, Norma, herself an expert hard hat diver, acts as his tender. An emergency air bottle is attached to his belt. These shoes weigh 20 pounds each. Forty more pounds are added to his breastplate. This is the Japanese lightweight copper helmet hard hat. Besides keeping him supplied with a steady flow of air from topside, Norma is able to keep in touch with him through a diving phone in his helmet. This method of entering the water is not recommended for the beginner, or for most divers for that matter, unless you're a veteran like Al Hansen. This diver down flag indicates that a diver is below the surface in the area, a warning for all craft to keep clear. In spite of Norma's frantic efforts to warn him, the captain of this boat must be unaware of what the flag means. He cruises closer to hear what Norma is saying. Those whirling blades are like knives and cut through Al's airline like it were spaghetti. An accident like this can be fatal if the diver doesn't act quickly. Just in case his air supply is cut off, Al carries this emergency bottle of compressed air. He doesn't need those heavy weights now. Fortunately, he can inflate his diving suit enough to soar to the surface. In this heavy, cumbersome gear, it is almost impossible for a diver to swim on the surface, so he is still not out of danger. Norma is very much aware of this, and the first responsibility of a diver's line tender is to get the diver up and aboard safely. 
If Al's inflated suit should suddenly lose its air, Al would sink like a rock and suffer one of diving's most dreaded perils, a squeeze. It could take his life. Without air in his suit, the pressure of water down deep in the sea would cause Al's entire body to be squeezed into the confines of the metal diving helmet. A horrible death to contemplate. No wonder Norma is quick to get him aboard. A severed air hose presents a constant threat to divers. As a partial solution, Al attaches this steel cable to the air hose. In the future, he hopes it will act as an almost indestructible lifeline. A salvage diver's life has one thing in common with most other troubleshooters. He is subject to call at any time. When that telephone rings, it might announce anything from a foul anchor to a serious disaster. This call is no great emergency. At least, no life is in danger. A pleasure boat in the harbor has fouled its anchor in some wreckage. Al has been asked to free it. It's one of those nuts and bolts sort of jobs that brings Al his bread and butter. He cuts a familiar figure on the waterfront on his way to where his boats, the Genie and Can Do, are moored. Everyone in the island knows Al Hansen and counts him as a friend. Although the lighter and more comfortable skin-diving gear might serve the purpose for this assignment, there is no certainty how long the job will take, so Al carries along his diving suit just in case. His little boat, the Genie, was designed especially for diving, with a motor-driven air compressor below decks and a telephone speaker near the wheel. Al's nephew, Steve, sometimes helps with the chores aboard. He likes to pilot the genie. Long before man roamed the skies in balloons and other aircraft or sent rockets into orbit, divers risked their lives invading the silent world beneath the surface of our seas. Much effort is being put forth by modern man to conquer the airspace above us, yet he has still hardly begun to solve the many mysteries of the watery depths all around him. In modern explorations, today divers can move about freely, remain submerged much longer, and descend to greater depths with the equipment now available. Today's job calls for a descent of over 100 feet, which is an easy dive for Al under most conditions. Locating the trouble is not too difficult either. All he has to do is follow the anchor line. Locating and freeing foul anchors is a routine job with a salvage diver like Al Hansen. It's not easy to navigate along the ocean floor in the heavy diving gear, but Al is an old hand at maneuvering his way to the trouble. This is an old iron ship, an interesting hulk, but a trap for anchors that are carelessly heaved in here.
With the all clear signal to the men on the distressed craft, the temporary interruption of their sea holiday is removed. Sunken wrecks have always held a special fascination for Al. The temptation to further explore this old hulk is hard to resist, in spite of the many dangers that he knows may lurk in the shadows. No diver can tell whether the rotting hull will be strong enough to hold his weight, or if some loose structure will fall and pin him to the ocean floor. These are the calculated risks a diver takes every time he starts to explore one of these wrecks. There's little he can do to protect himself against these dangers, except to be always on the alert. What diver can resist a look around inside a wreck? Al is just as curious as anyone else, and in order to make his way into the hull, must first deflate his suit. Now that he's in and wants out, he finds the opening of the hatch too small to let his reinflated dress through. Norma is all for going below to lend a hand, but Al tells her to stand by while he sees what he can do to free himself. Just to be ready, though, she gets into the cumbersome gear. If he can't free himself or gets into a worse predicament, every second will count, and she must be ready to go down. They keep in constant touch with one another through the diving phones, and at a time like this, Norma blesses that phone. Turn to Al Hansen trapped on the ocean floor in a moment after this brief message. Al has been down a long time, however, and his body has adjusted to the pressure. His system is saturated with nitrogen. Now the hazard of getting the dreaded diver's bends must be considered. A sudden rise to the surface could bring fatal results. Norma consults a decompression chart which has been computed to show at what level he must pause and how long the diver is to stay at each. Al has found through experience that exercising during the decompression helps to speed up the readjustment process. His narrow escape from danger is soon forgotten. And since Norma is already dressed to dive, she joins Al in a dive to cool off and to explore the wonders of the undersea world.
Underwater exploration recently has become a most popular sport. New species of fish and sea life are constantly being discovered, and the breathtaking coral formations in many parts of the sea have been the inspiration of many an artist. In this strange, watery world, Al and Norma are among friends, feeding the fish who seem to accept them without fear. There are some tricks a diver can do undersea that are impossible topside. Like, for instance, Norma's neat trick of walking upside down on the bottom of a boat. Norma shows us how it's done. Norma is one of the few accomplished women divers in the world and has held the woman's record for deep sea diving in heavy gear. She's a great help to Al in his salvage work. Salvage divers are subject to call to all parts of the seven seas, wherever disaster strikes. Al may be called to dive into the freezing waters of the polar regions, or in a shark-infested sea where some luckless steamer has sunk. He is ready to leave at a moment's notice. His home in Catalina offers small jobs to keep him busy during off times. The harbor patrol brings news of a little chore over at one of the pleasure piers, and Al loses no time in getting to the job. One of the attractions for visitors to Catalina is a diving bell enabling them to view the wonders of the ocean floor without getting wet. Al's job for today is to check the safety devices on this diving bell to see that they are working smoothly. Al is familiar with the machinery because he has serviced this gear all during the season. A little grease in the proper place and everything is in working order. No decompression is needed when riding this bell. The ocean floor is aptly called Davy Jones's locker because it contains so many relics of the sea. Al has often seen this chain half buried in the sand and he knows it is attached to an abandoned dredger tooth. The size and enormous weight of the tooth will make an excellent mooring anchor for one of his boats. With so many boats visiting the island, there's always a shortage of moorings. To be of use, the tooth will have to be moved to a suitable location in the harbor. Al discovers it is sound, solid, and well worth the effort to move it. But it's big and heavy, and it won't be an easy job. He will need the strong winch on the can-do. cable securely fastened, Al gives a signal to start taking in the slack. He's just hoping that winch and gear can handle this weight.
he escaped being crushed, but now he is faced with another peril. The dredger tooth has fallen across his airline. Maybe he can free it. Normally, the solution would be rather simple. If he can't dig it out, all he would have to do is cut his air hose, using the emergency air bottle for breathing and buoyancy, and head for the surface. But this hose is not so easy to sever, now that a steel cable has been spliced to it as a lifeline. can't possibly free the hose, and there isn't enough time to rig another hitch with a stronger cable. Norma is frantic in her desire to help, but she is powerless. With his supply of air shut off, Al has less than three minutes in which to free himself. When the emergency air bottle expires, Al will suffocate. He decides on a desperate plan, one that few divers would attempt. Maybe he can cut himself out of his diving suit. Only a man with iron nerves and in perfect control of them would ever attempt this. The diving suit is made of three layers of laminated canvas. Very heavy, the center layer is rubberized. Welded together, these three layers are tough and not easy to cut. Can he cut himself out in time? Once he starts, there is no turning back. He must be extremely careful not to bend over or fall. If he floods his helmet, he will drown. You must feel Norma's anxiety on the surface as her owl races desperately against time. His air supply is rapidly being exhausted. It takes balance to keep the water level even in his helmet. Just one more cut and he'll be free. such brushes with death are routine. But as a salvage diver, this is his work and his livelihood. Surely he can say without contradiction, danger is my business. Thank you, Al Hansen, for your courtesy and your assistance in making this picture possible. And I hope you'll join me again when I'll bring you another unusual adventure on Danger Is My Business.